You're listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, episode 77. You're listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast, where we believe business can be simple and you can use your intuition to run towards your goal. Self-made business and success coach, Lindsay Maloney, helps you start and scale your dream coaching business. With her step-by-step intuitive and creative guidance, you'll leave ready to put her tips into action, push your business forward, and work with your dream clients. Lindsay is here to help you get unstuck and structure your brilliance into a coaching business that's sustainable and financially exhilarating. Here's your host, Lindsay Maloney. On today's episode, we're chatting with Heather McKay. She is a professional photographer, a business coach for creatives who struggle to sell, and an avid travel hacker. Heather helps coaches and online entrepreneurs know their numbers, attract the right clients with the right offers, and she helps make selling feel fun. Heather is all about the numbers. She likes to nerd out with math and she's also really strategic with running your business. So it's enjoyable for you. We talk a lot about when's the right time for you to quit your nine to five, doing the math to make sure it's a safe and inspired move for you and your family. And then we also deep dive into something really fun, taking vacations for your business. Hashtag write off. You are going to want to listen to this episode and take tons of notes. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Heather, thank you so much for being on the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm a big fan of the show. Thank you. I love hearing that. And I also would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience and tell us all about what you do and who you serve. Uh, Well, I'm a professional wedding photographer and I generally, I help other wedding photographers figure out how to sell products so that they can run a sustainable business, uh, quote unquote, a profitable business. And I'm also an avid travel hacker. So I've got that little mix in there too. Just like I like to work remotely and teach other people how to streamline their business so they can free up their time uh, so that you can do whatever, but whether it be with the kids or travel more either way. But yeah, basically sales coach for creatives. I love that. And you you have a very unique business and I love that you kind of mixed your passions together. So tell me how you went from photographer to just traveling and running your business while you travel. Oh my gosh. I wish I had done it so much earlier. (laughs) Um, Being a photographer, especially a wedding photographer, you can imagine it's every Saturday. It's a lot of nights and weekends. Um, And I've never had a nine to five per se. So, you know, it's with that flexible schedule is fine. But what I was finding is being self-employed, we just work too much. We work constantly. Like there's always something to be done. And I was just, if I didn't have specific plans or something marked on the calendar, I would just work. So especially working from home. So after, oh geez, 15 years or something, I was starting to get a little burned out finally. (laughs) And I just wanted, I decided I needed a break and I, I kept calling it my sabbatical. But really what happened was that I turned 40 and I realized, oh, I've been talking about going to Africa for like 25 years. So I kind of blinked. (laughs) I felt like I was 20 a minute ago and then I turned 40. So I thought, oh, shoot, I better plan this. I never have the time, I never the money, but I better plan this trip to Africa. Otherwise, I'm going to blink and be 60. So that's what I did. I just put it on the calendar and I said, come hell or high water, I'm going to Africa in two years. So I streamlined. What ended up happening was I streamlined my business so that I could go and I automated everything emails, billing payment reminders. Um, I started recording videos of client meetings. Um, like for example, showing wedding albums to my clients I started, you know, utilizing YouTube. And so I wouldn't have to meet with my clients for that stuff anymore. I just, so I came back from that trip, which was amazing. If you haven't been to Africa, please go before all the animals are gone. It was amazing, (laughs) but it was more amazing to be seven weeks off the grid and not be worrying about my business. That was, Oh my, the, just the feeling of that was mind blowing. So I came back and for part of it was that being a small business owner, I don't get vacation time. So I knew that I wanted the trip itself to be as close to free as possible because I knew not marketing for seven weeks was going to hurt my business on the next season of weddings. So uh, I went down that rabbit hole of travel, travel hacking and learning how points and miles work and how to get a free flight and all this and that. So I came back from Africa, not really wanting to come back to work (laughs) and with a lot of extra airline miles. So that summer I decided, well, why don't I just go to Houston and visit my sister and work from her house? Like I just stand at my desk all day. I can really do that from anywhere unless it's a wedding or something. So uh, yeah, I ended up taking like five or six more trips that year just because I had all the extra miles. 
Um, and now I just am addicted to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally addicted to it. Cause I mean, if I'm working, I like, for example, this summer I worked from Newfoundland for a month between newborn babies and weddings. I had like a three and a half week window. I was like, Oh, I'll just go to Newfoundland and work from there. And it was just, I was more productive because I wanted to explore too. So I wasn't just surfing Facebook mindlessly and I wasn't doing all those things. So, oh yeah, I love it now. <laughs> so this coming winter, I'm going to go snowboard in Utah because we don't get snow where I live anymore and things like that. So I just love the freedom and flexibility that a more online business um, allows me, which I'm imagining most of your clients are. Mm -hmm. Your listeners are probably mostly building online businesses. So I highly recommend putting that breathing room into your business and automation really helps with that. Yeah, definitely. I was hearing your wedding photography business was kind of not wearing you out, but it was just holding you back from doing what you really love to do. Mm -hmm. So I, that was like your full-time job. And it was like, you said, I didn't get any vacation. I was working all the time. So you created a full-time job that was kind of hellish because you didn't have any freedom whatsoever. And so you mm -hmm. literally had to quit it for seven weeks so you could do something that you love. And I feel like this could relate to a lot of the listeners who have a full-time job job that might not be something that they created. You know, they're a nine to fiver. They're, they're going to work every single day. They're trying to run their business in the evenings or in, on the weekends. And they're hearing a lot of noise out there, a lot of pressure to quit your nine to five, um, run your business and be a full-time entrepreneur. Or did you feel pressured to pivot into something else? Or what was the feelings that you had that kind of made you want to change directions? Oh, that's a great question. So it's actually happened to me twice. So I did, when I built my photography business, I was working full time at a photo lab. Um, and that, that was the same thing. Partially I saw digital coming into the horizon from the old film era. So I knew the writing was on the wall. So I knew I needed to get a new job. And I, so I created the wedding photography job. Um, so I did have to quit that. And I definitely can talk about that. But for this one, it, it, was that, it was that way. It was um, once I came back from Africa and once I learned all of that, I, I was really burned out with just nights and weekends. Um, I'd been doing weddings for this is this year is my 17th year. So I'd been doing weddings for like 15 years already. And um, I, I, a lot of it was I just the challenge wasn't there anymore. I felt pretty I felt obviously I feel really confident photographing weddings and I feel confident with my clients and um, part of that is I just love to learn. And so the chat, the little bit of the challenge was missing. So that's a lot of the reason I I'm ready to quit wedding photography. I'm still doing them, but, um, just taking, um, being more selective of mm -hmm. what I'm taking and when I'm taking it so that I can fit vacations around them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, so I, I mean, I love being at a wedding. It's the rest of the stuff I've never loved. I don't love, unlike a lot of photographers, I don't love editing 2000 photos a week. Um, things like that. So mm -hmm. those are, those are the parts of the business I don't love. I love the client meetings and I love shooting a wedding, but the rest of it, I don't really, I'm kind of done with, but the, either way, both jobs that I've quit really, I mean, I guess I haven't quit the weddings yet, but you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The first job, yeah. it was really, um, it was really like that pivot of knowing, knowing when the, the real key for me is feeling in your intuition of when is it, when is my quote unquote job holding me back from what I know I need to do next? And, and there's a lot of reasons we hold on to old things, relationships, jobs, anything, you know, there's that safety net, right? So mm -hmm. you, you don't know what's on the other side, you don't know how it's going to turn out. And I think um, one thing I love is using math for that <laughs> is figuring out, okay, well, what do I need to survive and what, how can I build up? So with my first job, when I quit that, I just slowly built up the photography business at night and on weekends when I wasn't working at my day job. And then I saved up, you know, X amount of dollars. I wanted to have a good cushion, like six months savings. Um, but the most important piece, even, even other than savings is knowing that you have six to six months to a year's worth of income coming in. So if you can see that you have a steady stream of leads and a steady, like people asking for your services and your name is starting to get out there and you'll know, I mm -hmm. feel like you'll know, like I felt like my old job every minute I was there was holding me back from building a better business. So that's when I quit and I, um, I held on to my old job too long because of healthcare and 401k. And mm -hmm. what I realized as soon as I quit was that, Oh, as an employee of my own business, I can still have those things. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and ironically, it was actually cheaper for me to get my own retirement fund and um, healthcare for my business. So things like that that you think are safe security blankets, um, that's really what they are. <laughs> like just take that security blanket and lose it in the washing machine, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> and step out. But at, at the same time, you do want to be realistic of like having how many leads are coming in. How is do I see growth? over time where, and, and I would recommend is automate as much of that as you can. Um, I, I find it very exhausting to go out and like basically knock on doors constantly. Right. That to me is very tiring. Oh yes, absolutely. And I, I think that, you know, it's maybe I get skeptical cause I still have a full-time job and you brought up something that I think about all the time. And that was health insurance and 401k. Those are like the big, like the fear factors that we all like, well, no, I can't quit my job because I need this. And it's like, it's like built into our brain. And especially me, like I grew up on a farm. And so, you know, I heard about how expensive health insurance is and make sure you, you know, save up and save, save, save. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to do this on, as uh, on your own because, you know, farmers, they're doing everything on their own. That was my, that was my dad. That's my dad's life. And so that's a big thing. So I think a lot of that holds us back from really stepping into the full-time entrepreneur. But I really like when you bring up math because math is very comforting to me because it's like, no, you need this. And this is why. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? If somebody is thinking about, you know, I want to eventually go full-time entrepreneur. What do I need in order to make this a safe move? I think inspired is great, but I think we have to mix a a little bit of safety in there. Do you agree? 100%. And I highly recommend when people sit down to do the math is don't forget about health care. Don't forget about your retirement. I know um, a photographer who's had a huge business um, in my area, huge, um, but never saved a penny for retirement. (laughs) Like. Oh no, you know, so <laughs> that stuff, no, yeah, you have to, and this is where, like you said, math, oh, I love math, so I can go on about this for days, but basically, there's two things that math really do that are amazing. One is it really shows you what you really need, so then it, it quiets the fear, mm-hmm. and, the, and the other thing at the same time is it builds confidence, which is so ironic, right, that fear and confidence would be tied, but they are. So once you run your numbers properly, which I'll, I'll give your listeners some, some guidelines, mm-hmm. but once you run your numbers properly, amazingly, that high ticket offer you have no longer seems expensive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you gain all this confidence in your pricing when you know why you're charging what you do, which is why I love talking about it because it ends up quieting all the weird mindset stuff and excuses and this and that. And that being said, real quick, um, I do want to say there are, there has been one person I've coached that I was like, do not quit your job. <laughs> and that was because they work for the federal government. <laughs> so they have an amazing retirement package. <laughs> and they have amazing health care and they make a decent amount of money and they're charging accordingly for their side hustle. So I'm like, you're happy at your job. You love it. Knock yourself out. Don't quit. <laughs> like, and, and also how do I get a job with those benefits? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that being said, you do have to like look at your own situation and you know, that kind of stuff, but, but don't let, but just make sure fear is not holding you back. Right. So as far as the math of it goes, um, being a small business owner, you definitely want to like plan for things you wouldn't think about like retirement. That needs to come out of your business. One cool thing, especially if you start making a ton of money is, um, you can actually, I have a 401k for a sole proprietor, for example, and I can actually put in as Heather McKay, the employee and max that out. If I ever made like a, a, like a metric ton of money. Mm-hmm. And then as the employer, McKay's photography, I also can put in. So, oh, wow. Yes. Talk to your financial planner about your situation. But if you're making a lot of money, like if you're having a multi million dollar business, make sure you're maxing out what you really can. Um, so, the, so I would estimate like, okay, what are your retirement goals and reverse engineer just like any, anything else. Right. So mm-hmm figure out how much a month you want to put away and just set it up and automate it. So mine just comes out on the 15th of every month and I don't think about it. And then if I have a great year, I can put in more and this and that. Mm -hmm. So I recommend start with like those kinds of things because what happens, what I find is everyone who, everyone literally starts charging for whatever, an ebook or a Mm -hmm. course or coaching. And they literally just pick a number off the top of their head that they think other people are charging and they think they might be worth. 
Um, but when you actually sit down and look at all of these things that you need to cover, um, you know, I mean, you've seen all the Facebook ads, like make six figures in two minutes mm -hmm. doing this. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, honestly, six figures is the minimum you need to make. Mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. and I live in a very inexpensive town and six figures is the minimum my business <laughs> needs to bring in. If I bring in $120,000 in total sales, 30% of that's going straight to the government. Mm -hmm. especially being a sole proprietor. I mean, you can do different tax brackets, but, um, and then if you're married, then it changes, but generally speaking, 30% just straight off of every dollar you bring in, you're never seeing. So that's huge. <laughs> a little bit. A little. And then you need to put at least 10 to 15% in savings for profit because you want to expand. You want to be able to like, let's say at the end of the year, splurge on a convention or a, um, mentor that you weren't expecting to hire or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So you, I mean, I also budget for education, but you definitely want to have like a discretionary fund um, also in case your tax burdens higher mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can take that 10 grand or 10% of your business or whatever it is. And you can stick that in your 401k to reduce your tax burden. So there's a lot of reasons to do profit first. There's a book called it. I mm -hmm. didn't write it. I didn't write it, but I highly recommend everybody do that. Um, and you basically just take 10% of every paycheck, every, in every single thing you get in, just put that in this uh, bank account you can never get to because you'll need it eventually in your business. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then after that you have business expenses. So there's another, there's a lot of things in there. People don't plan on like, Oh, well, my internet at my house is covered. Well, but guess what? Your business should be paying for part of that. So, um, even with my house, like you, I work from home. So like 40% of my house can get written off. So 40% of my roof remodel, 40% of my furnace, 40% of my, our, my, um, electric bill, my internet, like cell phone, like all that stuff is deductible. So that also needs to go into your pricing. And that those are things people are like, Oh, but my husband pays for that. Or, Oh, it's just whatever. It doesn't matter. It still should be a business expense because then you're priced appropriately. Uh, for the market and it helps raise us all up if you're not undercharging. So there's a lot of dance there. And then whatever's left after taxes and after <laughs> education splurges, you know, all those eBooks that we buy for $49, <laughs> or, <laughs> you know, we go crazy around black Friday and cyber Monday, even though we tell ourselves we're not going to, um, you know, just budget for that. Give yourself a thousand dollars to blow on black Friday on whatever, whether it's pre mm -hmm. for acuity scheduling for a year or, whatever it is, they always have those deals you can't pass up. So just budget for it. Um, so I'm a big fan of that, obviously. And then uh, if you have computers or like I have cameras that are very expensive, I budget a thousand dollars per year because they basically last about three to five years. Mm -hmm. So these are things people just aren't typically planning for. And then when you get in a situation where your laptop dies, wouldn't it be great if you already had that five grand sitting in a bank account somewhere mm -hmm. ready to go? And then also you don't have to ask your partner whether you can buy the buy it or not mm -hmm. It's because it's a business expense. Right? right. So there's things like that, that I love walking people through because it's really shocking. Um, it's kind of like when you finally count calories, you're like, Oh, <laughs> okay. Maybe that glass of wine every night is not helping me, you know, or whatever. So you're like, okay, where can you trim or where can you show oh, these three software basically do the same thing. Maybe I pick one and get rid of the other two. And there's things like that that obviously you can do to trim the fat, but if you just price for it, then who cares? Right. 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 Do it all. Um, and so my point is if you, if you're bringing in 120 grand in gross sales, then you're probably going to take home maybe $50,000 depending mm -hmm. on your business model and whether you're selling eBooks versus in person or, you know, like as a photographer, my expenses are extremely high because mm -hmm. cameras are very expensive and um, I, there's just a lot more tangible expenses that I need than an online business person does. But that being said, it's still, yeah, I would say an average photographer, if they're bringing in over six figures in their business, they're probably making 30 to $40,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And that's actually that national average, which is very sad. That is. So I want to talk to the person who is okay with having their full-time job because of all of this, because that can, you know, you do this full-time. I imagine you can be honest, it gets stressful having that all on you, right? Mm -hmm. And it nobody does. talks about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's very, especially me, I don't have a safety net at all. Like I don't, not that marriages are safety nets, but 
some people have very supportive partners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people don't. I get that too. I see it all. I am a wedding photographer after all, but, <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, like just even the, even the idea, like I think that's what some people don't realize. Like even the idea of leaning on a partner for a minute is that alone is a say, even if you wouldn't do it, it's still yeah. safety net or splitting dinners or splitting the utility bill. Like there, there is a lot of things there that I definitely get stressed about and money is for sure. Always one of them, which is part of the reason I've had to work through all the things I coach on. I've, I did start out charging not enough and I do regret it. And it did take me too long to hit that six figure mark. And this is why I share that story because I want to get people there faster, especially if they're like me and they just want to crush it, like, I know I can do it. So what's the problem? So mm -hmm. usually it's a lot of mindset stuff of like, Oh, I'm not worth it. Or, Oh, I just started. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Who cares if you're charging money, you're charging money. So if you just started, don't test out on your clients anyway. So <laughs> I'm a big fan of just do it free until you know, you can repeat yourself and then go and then just start charging the real price. Because the, the, in my mind, it's, you're running a business. So if I went and bought a franchise, for example, I wouldn't give out free, you know, lattes for the first two years to build demand in my neighborhood. That's mm -hmm. not how it works. So we shouldn't do that either. What we're doing is we're doing it out of fear. We're doing it out of imposter syndrome. We're, oh, maybe I'm not good enough and all these things. And mm -hmm. um, there is something to be said for raising your prices over time as you do streamline for sure. But but I stand by the photos that I did tw almost 20 years ago at people's wedding. Like those were still really good photos. They have an amazing wedding album. Mm -hmm. I still look at them and I'm, yeah, of course, better technology or this and that, but those are great photos and my clients still love them. And why did I only charge $600 for a weekend wedding? You know, so mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's on me. And they pay, and that couple I'm thinking of off the top of my head, they paid four grand for their wedding cakes. So oh, wow. yeah, like it, so there's a whole bunch of this kind of stuff is what I coach on. It's like, well, let's look at this critically. <laughs> if they're right. not spending it on the photographer, they're going to spend it somewhere else. If they're not spending it on coaching, they're going to spend it on software or something else. Like there's all these shiny objects and why not get what you need to live with, um, mm -hmm. with your pricing. And so getting back to your point about people who have a full-time job, that's totally cool. I agree that that is so much easier if you like your job, especially that's mm -hmm. a benefit. Um, so for sure, keep it or go down part time because running a business has lulls and there's a, it's just so, I think one, one thing people don't realize about running a business is it's just not apples to apples. When people are at a job they don't like, they think, oh, if only I had my own business. Mm -hmm. The problem is most people aren't, <laughs> I don't think a lot of people are, um, built with the tools to be an entrepreneur and to be self-employed. I think you have to learn, most people have to learn that as they go and there's all these growing pains. So it's better to like go through those growing pains with that part-time job or a full-time job or a spouse that does make a ton of money. That's fine too. Like what, whatever the agreement is, but when you're doing your pricing, pretend you don't have that. Mm. Yes. I think that is like the highlighted point. Mm -hmm. Pretend that you don't have a job to hold you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I your job. And yeah, you can lose your spouse. Absolutely. You can lose whatever safety net you have very easily. So if you pretend you don't have it and that happens, unfortunately, then you'll be prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about something fun because everyone's like, oh, wah, wah. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Running a business is hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. So you're talking about all the things you can write off as you have your business, like your programs and, and all your, the space in your house and all that. What's something, what's your favorite thing to write off when it oh comes gosh. to your business? Well, my trips for sure. Like, so well, I guess it's a little different being a photographer, but one, one of the, I didn't even realize I did this until recently, but every single vacation I ever took while I was really like busy, busy, busy as a photographer, I would go to other cities to visit friends or family and I would connect with clients that lived there and I would do family portraits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it helped fund my trips back then. And, I, and then if I meet with a client, uh, which all my friends are my clients, so I visit them now too. Um, then technically it's a write-off if we're talking shop and stuff. I mean, it not, I wouldn't go so crazy. I don't get too crazy because I don't want the IRS down my throat, but, <laughs> but if I do like a legit photo shoot or if it's a wedding or whatever, then I definitely can like write that kind of stuff off. And so there's a lot of things like, like people don't realize, like, oh, conferences. I'm like, but you can write off all of that. Like 
the whole thing, the hotel, the airfare, the, all of that's a business expense. All of it goes under education. So everything you eat while you're there, as long as it's at a convention or conference or a retreat or, you know, some sort of thing like that, mm -hmm. that's all personal, even personal development ones count. Um, so I, the education portion is really fun to write that off. Um, and then, you know, like obviously cameras and stuff are kind of fun, but that eats into my profit. So I, I don't like to buy too much. And I, men, men photographers, if they actually listen to this, they would be like, what? I love that stuff. I don't buy a lot of camera stuff because I don't want to, I'd rather take a vacation or pay my mortgage or put, put it in my gym retirement. Yeah. Right. I think we all want to work more vacations into our life. Mm -hmm. And I think you have some tips for us. How can we work more vacations into our life and use it to build our business? <laughs> one or two tips, <laughs> just a couple. Uh, well, the biggest thing is, is as we just talked about, running a business is expensive. <laughs> so my thing is like, okay, take all that spending and use it strategically and get all your free trips. So for example, I, you know, I talked to earlier about how I needed that break and I went to Africa and it was my dream vacation. I'd always been like, oh, one day, one day, one day. And mm -hmm. I finally did it. Well, guess what? Now, couple years later, I've already been back to Africa for another month. And mm -hmm. so here's how I did it. it was the flight would have been like a $2,500 flight, this last one that I did. Um, and I ended up getting it for 85 bucks. And all I did, wow. yeah, mm -hmm, it's super easy, actually. <laughs> this is why I'm always talking about it. So and I'm like, ah, all the flights I paid for, geez. Um, so the key was, is all I did was before I knew I was going to go through like a little bit of a spending spree, like, lo and behold, Black Friday, mm -hmm. Friday you know, um, just I signed up for a brand new strategic credit card mm -hmm. uh, for the business, because here's the fun part is you can double dip, you can have, let's say, um, Delta Airlines, you can have that as a person, and you can have it as a business. And there and that's separate, and it's fine. Oh, yeah. And you can actually here's here's an extra tip for just your listeners. I never share this. But if you get like the personal one, you can actually find, it's really hard to find your referral link that you can have, mm -hmm. you get a referral link for your personal one and you can actually refer yourself to the business one and then you get a referral bonus for that. Wow. Or if you have a spouse go nuts, like there's another reason I'll be jealous that people have spouses, <laughs> like you can two player system. So, but anyway, so yeah, all I did to get this flight to 85 for 85 bucks to Africa was I signed up with a United Airlines um, business credit card. I got a sign up bonus and that's the key is to get a sign up bonus. And that sign up bonus, I think at the time was 60,000 miles. Well, with United, um, generally you can fly anywhere in the world, um, in economy round trip for 80,000 miles. You can find better deals or worse deals, but that's a general rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Um, so all I needed, so I had 60,000 with that sign up bonus plus, you know, extra spending or whatever. And then I just transferred in a couple more chase miles and then done. I had my whole flight. So there's tips like that, especially if you're a business owner. Like I, there's so many business owners that I know that are doing debit cards and I'm just like, I want to cry. Mm. I want to like, no, please stop doing that. So um, that's actually an online course that I'm building right now is exactly how to go down this rabbit hole. And my blog is full of stuff of like, which business credit cards um, the one to do and this kind of stuff. Even if you don't want to go crazy, like I do, I'm big on like, let me just open all these credit cards. Cause I like the sign up bonuses because it's a huge bump in my points and then you can close them. It, you don't have to keep it forever, you know, mm -hmm. close it after a year if you're not going to fly Delta all the time or whatever it is. So, um, so that's one tip. And then there's a lot of other little things like nuances there, but the biggest thing is just, again, plan for it. Like if you don't want to go down that route and you're like, no, I can't be trusted with credit cards and blah, blah, blah. There's mm -hmm. a million other ways to get points and miles without that. So that's fine. And you, but you don't even have to do points and miles. There's a lot of websites out there that do like mistake fairs. They, they track that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this might be available for one day and you can go to Madrid for like 300 bucks or all the, you know, there's websites wow. out there for that stuff. And then, but again, if your business can pay for it. So one photographer, uh, he's in the town next over from me in Syracuse. He took his whole family of four to Aruba on spring break, which is not a cheap time to fly mm -hmm. even with points. The whole family, the entire trip was covered with business expenses, like spending through, cause I got him on the cre right credit cards. He mm -hmm. already had some jet blue miles, but I got him on like business ones and then he went nuts. So mm -hmm. yeah, he was originally just hoping to get the flights covered. He ended up getting enough to cover the entire trip. So it was a full week paid vacation for the whole family 
just with his wedding photography business spending. Wow. Yeah. That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, totally. And then like me, I'm a wedding photographer. So that's kind of started why I've decided to do a course is I've been helping my couples. I'm like, don't pay. Mm. Even though I love getting paid in cash or checks, I do prefer it because <laughs> yeah, I want to yeah. pay the credit card processing fee. But guess what? I budget for that credit card processing fee anyway in my pricing. So mm -hmm. I don't care. And so they, I'm like, no, here, sign up for a new card, then pay me my deposit. Because <laughs> <that> I've, <laughs> I've helped my couples get free honeymoons, which is another, it's the same thing, five, top five to $7,000 people spend on these things. So yeah. Why not? Just, it's all about the strategy. If you know you're going to spend it anyway, and you're not going to go into debt for it, then why not right. go crazy? You know, and it's all legal. It's all easy or not easy, but it's all legal and, and above board. There's no, right. Debt, you know? So anyway, that's why I'm doing a course on it. Cause I've been helping my wedding couples get honeymoons. I love that because I've tried to be strategic and planning things with travel. And I'm like, this is a way too overwhelming. There's a way too many opinions just by doing a Google search. So I love that you kind of put it all into one thing. Mm -hmm. So people can actually not wait until they're retired or until they have all this money saved up to do something they love. I love that. Exactly. And your story is so inspirational to push people forward to do something like that. Cause everyone deserves to do to, to do their dream. They don't have to wait until, you know, the perfect time. Like this and makes sometimes sense. Sometimes it's easy. Like Ireland, a lot of people, I ask a lot of people, I'm like, well, where is your bucket list? Oh, it's always easy stuff like Ireland or Italy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, you could do that tomorrow. What? <laughs> you know, so, I mean, and my brother, I have a baby brother, he's a millennial and he's um, for his birthday. He's having a big birthday this year. So he's like, going to send himself to Australia, New Zealand for his birthday. And I'm like, awesome. So I've just, we sat down and so that's what my course does. It's like, okay, let's pick your dream location. Cause I feel like you can go to Colorado. You can go somewhere. Yeah. Like you can find, you can watch dates or what. I mean, if it's under 500 bucks, I don't use, I don't usually use points. I just pay for it. But yeah. with, with some big bucket list trip, like Africa, like it took me 25 years and it was because I thought the flight was going to be five grand. That's mm -hmm. why I never went. But mm -hmm. now I'm like, Oh man, I could go back tomorrow if I wanted to. So I just feel so free now, especially with my yeah. business. Like, like it's so much more fun to work every day when I'm working from Newfoundland or Ethiopia right. or like, it's just different. So, so that for me, it's working remotely, but for you or someone with a family, I would say, yeah, just take the whole family on a vacation. And then, then it kind of makes up for all those nights and weekends you work away from them. Totally. And yeah, my big dream is I want to take my family to the UK and so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to cost us 10,000 um, plus. And so I'm like, well, um, you, can, you can do it. I'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what my core, that's why I'm building the course. I mean, I'm using like honeymoons or my Africa trip as kind of the guideline, but once you learn the steps, you can repeat it. And that's why I'm so jazzed up about it. Cause I mean, it took me two years to learn it, to go to Africa and now I've already been back. So, and I've already done all these other trips that I would have never mm -hmm. planned on. So mm -hmm. yeah. And then of course it's a rabbit hole, but you don't, you don't have to keep going down the rabbit hole. Right. You're like, Oh, I'm fine with just cash back or whatever. You know, you don't even have to use it for trips. But um, for me, I'm just like, if you're going to spend all this money on the business, you might as well get mm -hmm. something out of it. <laughs> so yeah, if you wanted to go to UK, like that's exactly how my course is laid out. The first module is okay. Where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. And then I walk you through how to figure out who flies there, how to figure out what cards you might want to, you know, go into and then how to look at the sign up bonus. Is it, is it a good one? And so it really walks you through like the exact planning steps I took for my two trips to Africa. Cause those are very difficult to plan. Mm -hmm. um, so, but here, you know, I want to, um, only cause I'm love talking about this. I'm going to give your listeners two tips that are in my course that no one else knows about awesome. one, one, and these are non credit card tips. So I want to, cause that's why I want to throw them in. One is that most, um, airlines, I'm not going to say all because I haven't looked into all of them, but mm -hmm. most airlines don't care how long your layover is. So let, so when I went to Africa, for example, that's far away from, no, yeah. from New York, like it's forever. So <laughs> I looked into where was my layover and you can, as long as you're calling to book your flight, which is actually usually easier um, to actually call than do it yourself. Mm -hmm. But anyway, you can ask for a longer layover. And so when I came back from Africa this last time, it was, it, that would have been three nine hour legs of flights. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> nope. I need to get off the plane and walk for a little bit. So I uh, never heard, knew anything about Ethiopia. I didn't know. I didn't want it, but that was where my layover was. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So I ended up with a four, almost basically five days in Ethiopia as a layover. Oh my gosh, that's really, I've never heard of that before. I know, no one <laughs> talks about this and it's a totally legit thing. Like, and, and honestly, I paid a change fee to change my flight because I, yeah, yeah. Such a compl- that was a, such a complicated itinerary. I just needed to book the flight with reward points and not miss out on dates and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I booked the flight, but again, that was 85 bucks. So I was annoyed that I paid more to change my flight than I paid for the flight. That was annoying, but whatever. I mean, I didn't pay $2,500 for the flight. So paying $125 to change that layover once I knew my dates better and my itinerary and stuff. But anyway, my point is like with my brother going to New Zealand, he has a friend in LA. Well, guess what? The flights go from New York City where he is to mm-hmm. LA mm-hmm. and then LA to New Zealand. So he's going to spend a couple of days with his buddy in LA and that breaks up those long flights. So that's a free tip for you. And then the second one um, that I want to give is, um, of course, now I just lost my train of thought I'm gonna, because I'm so in love with this layover. One right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm just like, a free how vacation. Does, how does no one talk about this? Like, so if you don't, have, if you're not on like spring break, for, you know, if you're not on a crunch for time, take a, especially those longer flights, just take a look and see what those are, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but um all right yeah I lost the second one it'll come back to me in two seconds I'm sorry hopefully you can edit that out. yeah of course <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just because the layover thing is just like how is no one talking about that well yeah because it's like everyone does it on the computer and they don't even think it's an option they think they have to do exactly what's on the computer exactly oh here's the second one okay so the second tip is that and here's another thing nobody ever talks about. Again, mostly because we're doing all this research on our own and we don't think to like mm-hmm. call or ask or whatever. So for example, my um, sister and her boyfriend, they are going to Hawaii. And of course they want to go to one island and then they want to go to a different island and blah, blah, blah. Same thing. You just call the airline when you're booking your flights and they will actually give you what's called a stopover flight. So you can fly into one airport and you can take another flight for free within the same region. Mm. So like if you did go to the UK, you could take a flight to Madrid and then fly home via Madrid or whatever if you wanted to. It's that one connecting stopover. It's called a stopover. Uh And as long as it's within the same region, they don't care. Really? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Generally, again, I'm going to be general because I haven't looked at yeah. every single airline and every single situation, but all you have to do is call. That's the difference. So okay. my sister was kind of like, oh, it's too complicated. I'm like, just call because they were going to do two one-way flights, which is more. And then they were going to pay for that other flight in between. And there's two people like it adds up. That could have been a $500 error. So I mm-hmm. say all they had to do was call, which they did. Thankfully, they listened to me, but <laughs> they called the airline to book the flights once they knew what they wanted to do. And lo and behold, they're flying into one airport. They have a connecting flight, um, five, you know, however many days late, like it's a separate flight. Mm-hmm. And then they have that other flight coming home. So flying into one airport and out of another is called open jaw. And you can do, you can do that pretty easily, but the stopover flight is the piece nobody talks about. Very interesting. So you, when you book your vacation, you recommend calling the airline to book everything? You don't do it online? Mm-mm. I look everything up online. Mm-hmm. I've had better luck calling. Um, that being said, sometimes you have to call and get a better person on the phone. <laughs> mm. They don't know. You know the airport codes. You know where you're going. You, you Like for Africa, for example, it's just so complicated. Like, especially for me, because I have family there and I'm trying to get to all these different locations. And mm-hmm. like, so for example, like Johannesburg in South Africa is a huge hub huge most of the flights go through Johannesburg but this last time I went I wanted to fly into Harare which is in Zimbabwe which is just north of there and so it was just easier for me to talk to the people on the phone of like fly me to Johannesburg and then I'll figure out how to get to Harare you know because I know about this like Mm -hmm. extra flight I can get so and plus it's like kind of the same as like going to your next state it's like a hundred bucks or so it would be a cheap flight anyway um but it so it was really complicated and it wasn't until after I was like going down that whole rabbit hole or whatever that I realized when they were flying me through Ethiopia, Ethiopian Airlines goes to Harare directly from the connecting and, or to Johannesburg. So it was e- So some of that stuff, it's easier if you know that stuff because then you can guide the conversation. Mm-hmm. But that's why I get into it in my course because those are, you wouldn't know to do that 
if they right. want, you know, like yeah, I, yeah. I know all these, so there's these maps that all the airlines have that you can look up all this stuff ahead of time. You can see, okay, if I go through Frankfurt, where does it go in Africa? If I go through Dubai, where does it go in Africa? Like mm. look all that up and know that. So it was helpful for me to know. I wouldn't have thought that I could get a, a flight straight to Harare. That was, that was awesome. And then it turns out my cousin was on the same flight. So that was really fun. I got to meet her in, we get to say now that we met in Ethiopia. Oh, wow. <laughs> we met in the airport. Yeah. And I recognized her right away. I was like, yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> she, so she lives in Africa too. So we were going to a wedding is what the whole trip was for. Um, mm. And so, yeah, we were on the same flight down from Addis Ababa to Harare, but I wouldn't have known about that flight had I not known about these maps that you can look mm-hmm. at so it can't it, for those bigger trips it gets complicated and that's why that's what my course focuses on mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like little trips you can just do those yeah know, yeah totally easier. you want to go to Florida knock yourself out you know there's probably right. tons of people talking about how to get to Florida and do Disney. <laughs> you know, I don't want to talk about any of that so I want to show you how to go to these crazy places because part of it again it gets back to once I realized how to use my business spending to get and personal spending to get these cheap flights once, like, once I learned that, again, on United Airlines, 80,000 miles could get me to Fiji, or mm-hmm. you could take 80,000 miles and go to Italy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, Italy's cool and all, but, like, right, right. You know, if you want to go to Bali, go to Bali. Like, I don't know, it's far away. Use your miles for the big stuff, and then yeah. that's, why, that's why I usually pay for, like, domestic flights, cheap domestic flights I'll pay for, or mm-hmm. Newfoundland, I went from Toronto to Newfoundland, Canada. So that was like for them, a domestic flight. So I paid for that, but usually, so I save my miles for these big bonkers trips Mm -hmm. and then you have flexibility for first class and things like that too. Oh, love it. Okay. I have one more question for you, if you don't mind, do you recommend using like the online traveling sites like Expedia and all of those? Not usually. There's a couple of them that are really good. Um, Expedia is usually not one of the better ones, but there's like an app that I like that's called Hopper and you can put in dates and you, and it'll start telling you when to book a flight. Mm-hmm. Um, I use that one a lot when I'm just thinking about where my next trip is going to be mm-hmm. because then it's like, Oh, if you book, you know, they just kind of a look alert you of like, well, it'll probably go up 50 bucks if you don't book now or, or wait, the price can make it better. And, and I like that you can just kind of sign. So for example, I'm going to go to Utah this winter because I have a place to stay mm-hmm. and snowboard for like a month, I'll just work from their house. And so I have an alert of like January to March, <laughs> like mm. any time in there, I don't really care because I'm self-employed. <laughs> you know, right, right. I don't have spring break to go around. So, but if you have a spring break or something, I would definitely go with that. Google flights is a good place to start. Um, that, theirs is really helpful, but I, I personally not had any luck actually booking anything I found on Google flights. Mm-hmm. But, um, and then there's a couple other sites, but so one thing to know is there's like, I'm a big fan of the chase credit cards and their travel portal is the Expedia search engine. Oh. That's what they use for their search engine. They used to have a separate one, which was way better mm-hmm. by the way, but, um, but now they're using Expedia. So I haven't really been booking through chase for my flights because it's usually not the best deal. Um, yeah. So yes and no, you, you know, I would set them up more for the alerts. The ones mm-hmm. that I, if you have like for you, you have a family, you probably have spring break to go around and you, you want to go to UK, somebody like you, mm-hmm. I would say, I would say get on um, Scott's cheap flights or next Those two aggregate and they find mistake fares, they find cheap fares and mm-hmm. you can put in your home airport or, or a couple airports near you and where you might want to go and they'll alert you when there's like deals, but you'd have to jump on them. Like they're, mm-hmm. especially the mistake. You got to commit. Yeah. You got to be ready and ready to roll. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, because you'll see it, you'll see a flight for 200 bucks to like Shanghai or some mistake, some mm-hmm. crazy thing. And you need to know you can jump on it. And they're, they, their website's amazing for what they do. It's different than mm-hmm. what I do. Um, but their website's great about it. They show all these people who are like, well, some, you know, you might, that, that flight might not actually happen. They might not actually, even though you book it, they might actually not let you keep it. So so Mm -hmm. if it's a mistake fair, but they have a lot of other ones where it's just trending. So you can, you can find Ireland or, you know, England very easily with that kind of London, that kind of stuff. You can definitely Mm -hmm. those two sites. If you don't want to go down the rabbit hole of points and miles. 
Hmm. Yeah. Wow, Heather, you just know all kinds of stuff. <laughs> we, have been, we have gone on such a journey and you have provided such amazing information. I love everything ties together, um, having your business, making it work for you so you can do things that you love. You don't have to wait and making and figuring it out and doing it a strategic and smart way. And you have like, taken all the hard stuff and made it really easy. So we're going to put all your links in the show notes, but how can we find more about what you do and what you know? Cause it's a lot. I know it is a lot. I'm trying to focus, but it's hard. <laughs> Part, it gets down to be nerdy math person, you know, like, Ooh, how can I do Africa for $85? <laughs> I was out for two years, you know, but the math, part, both things, you can find both of those things are kind of weaved together on my, it's more of a nomadic travel blog. So I get into how I streamline my business plus how I get the cheap flights. So you can find kind of everything on my blog, which is parallaxlife.com. Parallax is um, a website term and a photography term. So mm. parallaxlife.com. You're always thinking. I know, it's such a nerd. <laughs> it's such a nerd. But you know, the, hey, power, real quick, power of taking vacation for your business. I had been trying to figure out a name for that blog for probably three years. Yeah. And it was when I was driving around the back roads of Costa Rica on a vacation that it finally came to me. I love it. So how's that for a way to end? Perfect. <laughs> it's like take vacations because they're good for business. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, but anyway, parallaxlife.com is my website. You can find all my links there. I have a YouTube channel for photographers and selling. Um, and then my travel stuff is like in the moment travel stuff is on my Instagram. So. Love it. Thank you so much for being on the podcast, Heather. This was so fun. And I know that everyone's going to be looking on all the vacations and thinking of new places they can go. And thank you for making it. It sounds like it's going to be a lot more possible for people to do something that they love while they run their business. Yeah. And I just hope they run it profitably. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it being on the show. And like I said, I'm a big fan and it was really fun chatting. For you to start booking your dream clients, I created this workbook for you because I wanted to share my best tips on how I book mine. You're not going to believe how easy these are, and I know you'll be able to take my tips and put them into action ASAP so you can start working with your dream clients. To grab the workbook for free, all you have to do is go to lindsaymaloney.com slash podcast. Hey coaches, are you a member of the Book Your Dream Clients community yet? Because you should be. Just go to dreamclientcommunity.com to request free access. We do fun things like website audits, challenges, and we even have a book club. Join the free Dream Client community now and we'll see you there. Thank you so much for listening to the Book Your Dream Clients podcast. If you want to find out more information how you can work with me, just head on over to my website, lindsaymaloney.com. You will be able to see how you can work with me privately or in a group setting. I'm all about helping you start and scale your coaching business, so I'd love to hear from you. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on iTunes and leave a rating and review. And if you want bonus points, take a screenshot of a review and tag me on your Instagram story. I'd love to see it and share it with my audience. And plus, you don't want to miss another episode.